It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fair side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul Pickin. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, YouTube, iTunes, and on iHeartRadio. It took 41 ga- days, but the Dolphins got back in the win column with a dominant 35-9 to win over the Denver Broncos. A lot of very good performances by some good young players on the Dolphins team. Dolphins really needed some of their younger cast to step up. Kenyon Drake ran for over 100 yards. Jordan Phillips had a sack and also caused another interception. Xavier Howard had two interceptions on the game. And Bobby McCain was really looking good again in the slot, Paul. Uh, so a lot of very good performances here by the younger group here of the Dolphins. Yeah, there really were. I mean, I was really excited what I saw out of Xavier Howard, Bobby McCain, uh, Jordan Phillips in particular, because those are three guys that really had a need to step up. I know Bobby's been doing it all year. I know he's a guy that we've pointed out a few times in the past. I know you and I have had differing opinions at times on Jordan Phillips, but one thing that hasn't differed was there were questions about his effort in the past and, and what we'd seen. So seeing these guys really have dominant moments in this game, I mean, Xavier Howard, he's going up against one of the better receivers in the game, even though the quarterback wasn't that great, and just lights out on this kid, on Demarius Thomas. Bobby McCain, normally playing in the slot, wound up having to play on the boundary in this one. And you know what? He stepped up. I think we can finally stop bashing Bobby McCain out there uh, in, on Dolphins Twitter. Yeah, I, I think Bobby McCain overall, I mean, when I look at the defense, he's one guy I can point to and say overall this year has – outperformed expectations he looks like a true nickelback and I think he projects as one next year and you look at the second cornerback spot I think Cordrea Tankersley has really looked the part Xavier Howard hasn't had a great season but he you know if this is the beginning of something the Dolphins can really go young and cheap at cornerback next year and then play it by ear whether or not they want to do that or, or whether or not they want to get another cornerback looking at Kenyon Drake here not only what I noticed in this game with Drake compared to Damian Williams is that the Dolphins were able to run a lot more pitch plays. They were able to get Kenyon Drake really out there in space, and he has such an ability to to turn a two yard run into slip and attack on turning that into ten yards, kind of like Lamar Miller used to be. Uh, Sonoris Perry, I think, kind of fits that mold too. So as I go on, I, you know, I've, been, I've been harping on this for a while. Uh, I think I'm totally fine with Dame and Williams really just being a, a spot player, getting a few carries when he comes back off injury. I am too. I, I like I like what we saw to Drake as the starter here. I want to see it a little more consistently over the next few weeks. I think Damian Williams does have some specialized wrinkles he can throw in. Two guys I really want to also give kudos to amongst the young players here. Obviously, Jakeem Grant, a guy that we both pointed at at various points, is a guy that needs to get a little more involved. He played with a fire under his ass this week. And one guy that we haven't talked about here, really, that that could have been a player of the game candidate, despite the fact that it was a dominant performance, was Matt Hawk. I mean, this guy consistently pinned the Denver Broncos in terrible field position uh, inside the 10-yard line. And... Really, I know beginning of the third quarter, I watched him punt a ball, and and I put out there on Twitter, said to a few of the folks I watched with that Miami was going to get more than one safety in the game because he was putting the Broncos behind the eight ball so much it was bound to happen. I didn't expect it to happen on the punt, which was a little bit weird. But you know what? Matt Hawk had an amazing game. For a guy that had some rough spots earlier this season, he really, really, really was a huge part of the dominance in his performance. And another thing, too, Paul, that contributes to that is the Dolphins were actually moving the ball well on first down and getting the ball to midfield, to their own 40-yard line. So even when they weren't scoring, they were actually putting Matt Hawk in a good position where he could pin people deep. Can't tell you how many times this year the Dolphins started out at their own 20, then they'd be going backwards, and now Hawk's trying to punt the length of the field. So those things kind of go hand in hand there. So, yeah, great game by Matt Hawk. 
Another thing I'm really looking at uh, toward the end of the year in these last four games is Jesse Davis's development at that right guard spot. I, you know, I've, I've watched him closely over the last two games, and other than allowing one sack against uh, Kyle Van Noy against, against the Patriots, I thought Jesse Davis has looked every bit the part at right guard, and that's going to be a huge coup if the Dolphins can sew up one of those right guard spots, because I was also starting to think Mike Pouncey can't play another three holding penalties in this game. You know, for me, I, I'm, I'm not huge on Pouncey. I was totally fine with Brendel yet again, guy that I, I remember pointing out before the draft this year. And really he is a guy that I think needs to get a little bit of playing time. Rest Mike Pouncey a little bit, see what you've got in Brendel because Pouncey is just rough to watch out there. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you your thoughts on, because I know there's been some back and forth and what does it all mean, onside kick, for it, against it, what did you think there when uh, Gase went for it? I thought it was a prick move. I really do. Yeah, I'm, I, I was not a fan of it. If you're up by four scores and there's 10 minutes left to go in the game, you're playing your former defensive coordinator that you were close with. I didn't care for it. But, hey, you know, you can do whatever you want, and Adam Gase made that perfectly clear after the, after the game in the press conference. For me, I, I looked at it and I went, you know what? We've had enough times where Miami took their foot off the gas and made it ridiculously close unnecessarily. We've had a number of times where other teams, even if you look back early in the season, took their foot off the gas and Miami took advantage. So, you know what? Play to win. I, I – I didn't love the idea of the onside kick, but you know what? At least it was a move playing to win and not playing to not lose because I am so tired of that after the past 10 years. Another quick hit, too, speaking of pricks, Rob Gronkowski suspended, appealed, suspension upheld for an absolute douche canoe move against the Bills this week. Hey, at least he's not going to be going up against Kiko Alonso in this one. What are, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I, I watched that play live, and I looked at that, and I thought, oh, my gosh, he I'd be surprised if he's only suspended one game. And he was suspended one game. He definitely deserves it. And it's going to be an interesting thing now next week because the Patriots don't have Martellus Bennett. He went on injured reserve. They don't have Gronkowski. Dwayne Allen, who they got in the offseason, is more of a blocking tight end. So the Patriots and also Chris Hogan, they're probably not going to have either. So they're going to be down some weapons in this game. So this is the game that these three young cornerbacks, Cordrea Tankersley, Xavier Howard, and Bobby McCain, need to play up on the football, and the Dolphins need to get some pressure here, and that needs to go hand in hand. But, yeah, douchebag move by a very talented douchebag player, but – it, it, yeah, it's 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 gonna be a it's gonna be a big loss here in the in the Dolphins Patriots Monday night game. Obviously, you're looking for those guys to get up on the ball. What are another one or two things that you're looking for in this in this upcoming game against the Pats? I think in these last five games that Kenyon Drake really had to emerge as the Dolphins' starting running back. And not only did I think Drake played so well in the last game on the stat sheet, but it, it was it were it was really the the six, seven, eight yard runs that he had where he showed a lot of patience and a lot of discipline. I, I think Sonoris Perry and Kenya Drake, if the blocking is there, can be a really effective one two punch because they have the physical skills to do it. And I don't think Damian Williams has those physical skills. So I want to see them continuing to move up the depth chart because the more Kenyon Drake's and Jesse Davis's and Chase Allen's and Vincent Taylor's and Bobby McCain's that the Dolphins see the rest of the year. If they finish the season here at eight and eight or so, which is possible, and they have some of these youngsters, these young underpaid young players projected into next season, if they can gather, gather a lot of sticks there and put them into some starting, starting spots for 2018, I don't think the whole 2017 season is a complete loss. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the young players, but one guy I really want to see kind of wake the hell up and play to his potential here is I need to see Devontae Parker do something. He was a guy that wasn't good in this last game despite the dominance of the team. And if he's not able to step up, 
I want to see Jakeem Grant get in there on the boundary. Send a message to Parker if you have to. Do what you've got to do. Uh, n- another thing I'll be looking for in this one is I really, really like what I've seen out of Stephon Anthony and his limited action thus far. I want to see him get more time. I'm a little confused by it being in place of Lawrence Timmons, who's been one of the better tackling players on this team this year at linebacker and been better in coverage than advertised. But you know what? If they're looking at Stephon Anthony as potentially the future, and they've obviously got Kiko locked up for a while, whether we agree or we don't, I, I still would rather see Stephon get out there and, and get some playing time and see what we've got in him. One other thing that I want to see in this game, I really want to see Jordan Phillips continue to show that more consistent motor we've been seeing out of him lately. I want to see him continue to show his flashes of dominance, but then have the, the valleys in between be much, much higher than they, they were previously. So that's an exciting thing for me as well. For our listeners, by the way, just a quick reminder, we actually still have that sale up. We'll keep it up for a little while on our merch page on the finside.threadless.com. Lots of quality stuff out there. Take a look at it. Uh, we'll keep that sale up for a little bit. and They've got a free shipping promotion. So definitely take advantage if you're listening. And, yeah, circling back to what you said, yeah, Devontae Parker, I just can't make sense of it anymore. I mean, you look at his last three games that he's played, I mean, dating back to the to the Titans win earlier in the year, it's been one catch for five yards, one catch for six yards, one catch for five yards, and hurt the rest. And you look at this, this past game, Jarvis Landry and Kenny Stills looking like a very effective one-two combo. I think I might be at that spot now where I think Jarvis Landry – could be worth some big bucks because I don't think you're paying a whole heck of a lot of players where it may have, may have looked like the case earlier this year, as far as long-term uh, players that you want to get. So Paul, looking at the rest of looking into the, the Patriots money dolphins, money night game, you think the dolphins have a chance here to pull off the upset? I think they do. I mean, given the fact that the Patriots are riding a little bit low as far as injuries and suspensions, uh, the Gronkowski matchup against Kiko would have been an absolute and utter nightmare. So that that definitely swings things a little bit closer than people expect. But I think New England does still edge out Miami. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, I think it's going to be 23 to 20. But I will be the happiest person on the planet to be wrong because living up here in the heart of New England, it's always a fun day when the Patriots lose. It's always a fun day when Miami wins. And it's even more fun when it's Miami winning against the Patriots. Yeah, I, I think the Patriots will win too, but I you know, I, I don't think it's going to be the blowout that I probably would have predicted a few weeks ago for, for a lot of reasons you said. I mean, after the Dolphins went down 14 nothing to the Patriots, I thought if they didn't make the mistakes they did in the last game, like the Kenyon Drake fumble, like uh, the Matt Moore interception where Devontae Parker didn't jump, I thought that could have been a really close game that came down to the wire. And I, I think now, too, you've got – some of these younger players who are playing hungry and they've got a win under their belt now and uh, playing a little bit more care carefree on both offense and defense. I I would say Patriots 26 to 17 right around that mark. But you know, the other part of that too is if the dolphins can pull off an upset here, those last several games of the year, you've got Buffalo twice and you've got Kansas city I mean, those look like much more winnable games here down the stretch. Maybe the Dolphins can go on a late season run, kind of like they did in the middle of the season in 2016. It's possible. I'm going to focus one game at a time. I'm going to focus on development. And if Miami's able to get the development and win those games, I'm all the happier. But I, I really, really want Miami set up for long term success. And to do that, they need to see what they've got in some of these young players. Interesting look, too, with Jakeem Grant. Uh, final observation here from the Broncos game. Uh, I liked how they used him out of the backfield a few times. I think that is a really interesting look. They also did a couple fake end arounds with Jarvis Landry. Doing a few of those things, it, it frees up the middle of the field and it allows these fast running backs to get through the hole. I think that contributed a lot to, to what they were doing. Yeah, the Broncos were a bad football team this year, but the run defense wasn't bad, and the Dolphins were able to run the ball effectively against them. So, Paul, I try to be optimistic this week and and really bring a positive attitude to the show. I try to say the Dolphins are going to, you know, go on the last uh, you know, three or four game winning streak, a possibility. And you just took those dreams and you crushed them. So when I come back next week and I'm angry again, <laughs> you just remember this conversation, okay? 
Always sugar. Always. <laughs> <laughs> that will do it for us here on the Fin side. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the Fin side. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the Fin side. side. It ain't the left side or the right side. Right side. And it must be the Fin side. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what...